Retrobit recently announced it was doing a Valus Collection reissue for the Sega Genesis, a trilogy of games covering Valus 1, 2, and 3. These reissues come in special collector's editions with slip covers, full color manuals, art cards, and a reversible slip cover for the case. You can buy these games individually, or you can get them in a special set where you'll get all three with a few added bonuses. The very first Valus showed up on Japanese home computers way back in 1986. Hardware such as the PC-88, Sharp X1, and MSX hosted this Wolf Team Develop action platformer. But what exactly is Valus? If you haven't played any of these before, that could be the very question you're asking yourself at the moment. Well, that's what this episode is all about. We are going to go over all three Valus games for the Sega Genesis talk a bit about their origins, stories, and the overall quality of the series in general. Is this group of games something you should be adding to your collection today? Let's find out. While the first computer versions of Valus showed up in 1986 and 1987, the Genesis and Mega Drive version wasn't released until December of 1991. This was not a direct port and is instead a remake with new sound and visuals across the board. The story here is your standard Japanese fare of interdimensional bad guys, queens needing help, and a sword granting you the powers of a superhero. To sum up, an evil demon is attacking the Dream Realm and armed with the Valus Sword, our hero Yuko is fated to defend it at all cost. This story plays out during cinematics interspersed throughout the adventure. The gameplay of the Genesis release is fairly straightforward and indicative of the game design of the era. You run left to right, swatting down bad guys until you meet a much larger enemy who takes a lot more damage to put down. Your sword can be augmented with various projectiles like bullets, lasers, arrows, and grenades. Collect three of the same upgrade to get these attacks at their most powerful. You also get different types of magic after you defeat the bosses of each area. These attacks use magic points and damage everything on the screen that it hits, and can even block projectiles. The more powerful the magic, the more points of magic it uses. Item boxes hold life and magic replenishment, similar to the candles in Castlevania. The main hero, Yuko, has a normal jump, a high jump, and a slide to negotiate the terrain she'll see, a series of seven acts that each have various subsections. I actually enjoyed this one and found it a worthy addition to my Genesis library. While the gameplay is incredibly simple, it has a charm that made it easy to pick up and play. I love the visuals, which feature some nice layering in the backgrounds, and the soundtrack is a fine example of how well Japanese studios could handle that FM synth. Some of you may find it slow, but I think if you enjoyed the likes of Castlevania, Shinobi, and 1980s game design in general, you'll find a lot to like here as well. Sid of Valus is perhaps the most curious of the bunch. This is a reskin slash remake of Valus 2, and it takes numerous liberties with the original. Not only is the main hero now done in a chibi art style, but the enemies have exaggerated cutesy features as well. Once again, a bad guy threatens the dream realm, and it's up to Yuko to save the day. Well, that is in the Japanese version. In the US edition, Yuko is now known as Sid for some reason. 
From there, the gameplay is your standard Valus adventure. You have a jump, a double jump, as well as various weapons to deal with your enemies. You also gain additional suits as you defeat the bosses. These suits have stats that affect your defense, attack, and speed, and can make a huge difference in how the game plays. You also have screen clearing bombs that hit everything around you. Unfortunately, Citavalis has the mechanics of a game that feels disjointed and unfinished. Your sprite moves entirely too fast and is overly floaty. On the regular stages, this isn't much of an issue, as it's easily adjusted to. But on platform heavy segments, this goes from a lighthearted romp in the park to a creature of pure frustration. Trying to keep Yuko on the platforms and away from the spikes and pit damage is nothing short of maddening, and you'll eat countless deaths while trying to get a feel for it. These deaths add up quickly and there are no continues, meaning that you'll see the first two stages a few dozen times before you see any of the late game. This stands in direct contrast to the simplistic design in pretty much every other aspect. The stages are typically short and incredibly easy, and the boss fights are nothing more than knowing where to be on the screen to rapid fire the hell out of the bosses. That leaves only a few places of any real challenge, but it's challenge born entirely from its poor mechanics, which will no doubt send many of you scurrying away in disgust. It's a real shame too because the ability to switch your weapons and armor on the fly is a great setup that could have really been used to make the stages and boss encounters mean something. This was so close to being a classic, yet it ends up being the weakest of the bunch. Valus 3 looks and plays far more like the first Valus, which is a very good thing. Yuko returns to stop the King of the Dark Realm from invading Earth and the Dream World, an adventure that spans seven acts, each with multiple subsections. Like the original, there are short and high jumps, slides, magic attacks, and projectiles in your arsenal. This time, you have a power gauge that controls your damage potential. Every time you use your sword, your gauge resets and needs to recharge before you return to full power. Attack too soon and you do a lot less damage, kind of similar to the legendary axe on the PC Engine. Also new is the addition of two new playable heroes. There's Cham, a whip-wielding bad guy that joins your calls, and there's Volna, Yuko's sister and a powerful magic user. You can switch to any of the three heroes on the fly during gameplay, but make sure you have the right one for the boss fight, because there you are locked to using only one. Like the first Valus, Part 3 is a slower action game, but still has that great pick up and play feel. I really enjoyed the visuals, which has nice parallax, and again there are some decent musical selections as well, though I did find the first one more appealing overall. But honestly, the first and third games have such a similar design setup, if you enjoy one, you'll almost certainly enjoy the other. Even with the slightly less impressive music, 3 is my favorite of the bunch. The different heroes really add a much needed variety to the gameplay, and it all comes together feeling like a Castlevania spinoff more than ever. If that thought appeals to you, welcome to the Valus Universe.
There are numerous details about these three games you might find interesting. While the US and Japan got all three of them, none were officially released anywhere else. European releases were planned, but ultimately never happened. All three of these titles were also released out of order. It was also strange that both Valus 1 and 3 were released on 8 megabit cartridges, yet Sita Valus, the last one available, was only a mere 4. Unfortunately, the series ended on Sega hardware with this trilogy, and the Genesis did not receive a port of the PC Engine's Valus 4 or the Super Nintendo Super Valus. Now that Retrobit is working with renovation to bring these games back to the Genesis after 30 years, here's your chance to own them once again. Pre-orders go up October 20th and run to November 27th. Each game is $50 individually, or you can buy the set for $145. In the facts section, Retrobit stresses that the PCB build quality is to spec, and given their past work, I have no doubts the quality of the package. The original releases are on up there in prices at places like eBay, so if you collect physical games, this is a great way to add them to your collection while supporting the original IP holders and the companies who do these retro reissues. I'll slap some links in the description so you can check out the listing for yourselves and see if it's something you'd like to support. I'm SegalordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.